Oi friends, today we'll be making our zombie attack us. This should be quite simple and easy. We'll be doing the actual code and the animation uh, in the same video. First, I want to be able to get some kind of visual confirmation that our thing is working. So I'm gonna set up the animator of the zombie to work with the animation. If you go over to the animator, uh, it should open the zombie one. But if it doesn't, just open it in the folder, zombie animator, and you should have it. Okay, we have our movement blend tree. You can use the breadcrumbs up here to move back to the base layer. Uh, and I'm going to add the attack animation. So we have our enemies animations in our FBX folder. And uh, I'll just drag in the zombie attack animation. And then I'll connect it to the movement blend tree. I'll just right click on the movement, make transition to zombie attack. And from zombie attack to movement. I'll also go to the parameters up here and add a new trigger called attack. And then uh, I'll go to this arrow that goes from movement to zombie attack. I'll add a new condition and set it to attack. And then I'll uncheck has exit time. And on the second transition, I'll just leave has exit time on. And now we should be able to, to transition to our attack by just calling this trigger. Let's open up our uh, zombie uh, controller. Now I could make a separate script for zombie combat, but I don't think it's needed. It's going to be a very simple attack. And we already have all the functionality we need inside of here. So we have functionality for, for rotating towards the player or the target and moving to target. And we also set up a uh, small distance check that tells us whenever we reached the good stopping distance to the player. And this is where we want to attack as well as stop the uh, running animation. So I'll just comment this out just, to, just so we know where we need to attack. And then I'll create a new private void attack target okay and in order to do this I'll need to get the uh, zombie stats that we made last time I think because in there we have our damage and attack speed so we're gonna go do that up here whenever we have our nav mesh agent animator and transform target I'm just gonna get the private zombie um, stats you could get just the character stats it would still work I feel like this gives us more functionality though. I'm going to call this stats and it's going to be equal to null. And then I'm going to go to my get references function that's called in the start method. And I'm just going to go ahead and say stats is equal to get component. And I'm going to get zombie stats. Okay. Now that we can reference our stats, we can uh, go ahead and apply the damage. In our zombie stats, we already have a function called deal damage. Now we could handle this in here. And the way I'm going to do that is just by uh, having to reference a character stat script that I'm going to damage. So the way it's going to work is our player as well as our zombie both have a character stat script. Uh, our player has player stats which derives from uh, character stats as you can see. And, and our zombie stats as well derive from character stats. So we can get both of those by just referencing character stats. So in zombie stats right here, I'm going to say character stats, uh, stats that to damage or something like that. Just so we have a reference to that, we can give it this and then we can do the functionality in here. So what I'm going to do in deal damage is say stats to damage dot take damage. That's because our character stats script has a function called take damage and all that does is just uh, calculates the health after the damage and then sets health to that. The reason we're using this is because we're using set health to and if you take a look at that function it checks health and checks health actually updates the health well not in here but in player stats it does uh, so we don't have to actually handle any kind of updating UI because we've already done that in here. So it's kind of a nice functionality to have and take damage takes in a int damage and what I'm going to give it is just the damage from this script okay now f damage is a float for some reason and it should be an int so I'm just going to quickly change this to, to that and we should not be getting any errors and now we can call deal damage and it's going to take the stats that we give it and deal damage to it and now in our zombie controller whenever we attack target I'm just gonna uh, have to get the character stats in here as well. Oh, character stats. Then I'm gonna call stats to damage again. Okay, 
and then in here uh, we just have to call stats dot deal damage again usually we do this in a combat manager script but i feel like we can do it all in here he's not gonna have like any abilities or anything so it's quite simple and then we have to give it the stats now thankfully for us we're only gonna have one target which is the player and we have a reference to it right here so what we can do uh, whenever we attack here is say character stats dot or sorry uh, not dot character stats I'm gonna call these player stats or like target stats that's equal to target dot get component and we're gonna get component character stats so we're getting the player stats or the character stats uh, script from our target component and then what we can do is call attack tag target and then we need to give it the target stats and now we just have to pass that what we gave it here into there and it should work also uh, whenever we attack target here I'm gonna go ahead and say anim that set trigger and I'm gonna trigger our attack trigger that we made earlier in the in this episode and now let's try and do that you can see whenever our zombie gets close to us he attacks but our health is already zero and he kind of attacked way too fast that's because this is then getting called each frame so 60 uh, 60 times a second well probably more at the moment but usually we get called 60 times a second and we don't want that we want it to happen only once every attack speed and currently our attack speed is I think 1.5 so once every 1.5 seconds so in our zombie controller I'm gonna go up here and create a new private float that I'm gonna call uh, time of last attack or yeah time of last attack I'll just call it that and I'll set it equal to zero using this we're gonna handle the attack speed so in our if statement here whenever we stop I'm gonna uh, have to check if time of last attack or sorry not time of last attack I want to check for time dot time so the current time in the game so if time dot time which just counts the seconds of playtime is bigger or equal to last of time uh, time of last attack sorry plus stats dot attack speed and we can't get that currently because attack speed is private now you, c uh, you can just make this public and that I think would be the easiest for beginners so we're just gonna do it that way so yeah we just wanna say time of last attack plus stats dot attack speed just like that now how this works is very simple I'm gonna explain it just we have to do one more thing uh, whenever we do call this I wanna set time of last attack equal to time dot time basically we've already handled this when we were doing the player attack speed uh, if time dot time is 10 and we've last at and we attack which means we set time of last attack to 10 then we're gonna check if 10 is bigger or equal to 10 plus 1.5 which is 11.5 then this is not gonna get called it's basically going to wait for 1.5 seconds before attacking again and then we're gonna reset that timer so on and so on so I just wanna move this into there okay let's try this now you can see he's taking 1.5 seconds to attack and it works quite well okay if I try and move away from him you'll see we have another problem so as soon as he walks up to us he attacks and that's not something we want because it's gonna be pretty hard to deal with any zombies because if he gets close to you he's just gonna damage you and if there's like 10 zombie zombies chasing you they're all just gonna instantly kill you so I want him to wait for 1.5 seconds before attacking so whenever he walks into our range I want him to wait for 1.5 seconds so the player maybe has a small window to just escape the way I'm gonna handle that is each time I get close to or the zombie gets close to me I'm just gonna set time of last attack equal to time that time if that makes sense so whenever he gets close time of last attack equals time that time and now he should be waiting 1.5 seconds before he attacks us and that's not gonna work because we're also gonna need a new boolean value that's my bad uh, for uh, has stopped or something like that 
or has reached player it doesn't really matter but I'm gonna set that equal to false by default and then whenever he enters our stopping distance we're gonna set that variable has stopped equals equal to true but we're also gonna check if has stopped is false which means the same frame or the exact frame that he stops this variable is gonna be false and if has stopped is false, you can just put an exclamation mark there, it's gonna work. Then we set has stopped to true. And we also set uh, our time of last attack equal to time that time. Basically, this value uh, is gonna have to be false every time he approaches us. And that makes sure that this only gets called once and not each frame again. We just gotta make sure that this does get set to false, so each time this is not true so basically we're just gonna say else down here so if distance to target is not uh, in the stopping distance then I'm just gonna check if has stopped is uh, true then we just set has stopped equal to false okay so just so we're not refreshing it each frame it doesn't really make sense to do it each frame let's check how that works now okay and now when he walks up to us He's gonna wait 1.5 seconds and then he's gonna start attacking if I move away and try that again he's gonna wait 1.5 seconds and then start attacking so a pretty cool attacking system it's actually quite simple uh, but it works and you can see if you wait for like a second before he attacks you and then move back and try again it's gonna reset he's gonna wait 1.5 seconds again so I don't think there's a bug in there or something so that's good, works fine as intended. Uh, yeah, thank you for watching, hopefully you learned something new, and next time I think we'll be spawning our enemies. So yeah, thank you for watching, and that's it for today. Okay now, bye bye.